schools, except for phase one states, to reopen on 3rd October. Vaccine cards from PPV centers valid as vaccination evidence. Welcome to News at 10 with me, Brendan LePaul. The school sessions for this year has been extended until March 2022. Senior Minister for Education, Dato Dr. Mohamed Razi Jidin, explained that students will remain in their respective schooling year in January and February. They will only move on to the next school year in March next year. Tempoh dua bulan ini akan digunakan oleh pihak kementerian untuk melihat tahap penguasaan anak-anak kita dan melihat apakah bantuan, dokongan, sokongan yang kita boleh berikan bagi memastikan anak-anak kita apabila mereka naik ke kelas berikutnya, mereka telah bersedia sepenuhnya. The start of the school session for year one primary students will be in March 2022. Meanwhile, the Education Ministry informed that the face-to-face -face school session will be conducted in stages starting the 3rd of October, according to the National Recovery Plan NRP, on a turn basis. Only states in Phase 2, 3 and 4 of the NRP will begin school sessions on 3rd October. This means that schools in Kadah and Joho will remain closed for now, and all students in the state will continue their school sessions online. In another related note, Dato Dr. Razi also informed that as of yesterday, 97.46% of school teachers nationwide have received the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, with 88.56% fully vaccinated. As for school executive groups, 96.96% have received the first dose and 83.38% of them fully vaccinated. 90.56% of school supporting staff have also received a dose of the vaccine, with 74.9% of them having completed both doses. Apa yang kita tekankan bahawa dalam semua keadaan, semua mereka yang berada di sekolah pada satu-satu masa dalam ketiga-tiga kumpulan ini, mereka mesti telah divaksinkan. Dan kita telah keluarkan arahan kepada pengusaha-pengusaha khususnya dalam konteks kebersihan, keselamatan dan juga kantin atau daiwan makan untuk memastikan semua pekerja mereka yang ingin atau yang akan berkhidmat dalam sekolah mestilah divaksinkan. Furthermore, the Education Ministry has also obtained a list of school bus managers from the Transport Ministry which can be referred to by the COVID-19 Immunization Task Force CITF for the purpose of vaccination priority. On top of that, the wearing of school uniforms will not be made compulsory at the moment. The decision was made to provide some leeway in easing the financial burden for some families that may be economically challenged. Kerana apa? Kerana semangat kita adalah untuk membawa mereka kembali ke sekolah. Bukan kita nak Nak punish mereka, bukan kita nak denda mereka, seboleh-bolehnya kita inginkan anak-anak ini dapat kembali ke sekolah. Students are allowed to attend school without uniform but their attire must be appropriate. In addition, wearing face masks will be made compulsory in school. Taking into account any other issues or difficulties in turning up to school, Dr. Dr. Razi also explained that students' physical absence from school will not be considered an offence. However, he insisted that parents or guardians must first inform that their child will be absent to the school management. Now, vaccine cards received when getting vaccinated at vaccine distribution centres, PPV, during both doses of the COVID-19 jab is still valid while waiting for data to be updated via MySajatra. Farma Niaga in a statement emphasised that all recipients of the Sinovac vaccines will also be able to verify their vaccination status by producing the aforementioned vaccine card. 
for individuals that do not possess a smartphone or do not have the technical expertise to use one, they will also be using the vaccine card as proof that they have been vaccinated. Previously, Health Minister Kairi Jamaluddin announced that the Baisajatra team has been instructed to solve the issues regarding digital vaccine certificates. He also permitted the public use of vaccine cards to get about in their daily lives. Individuals who are going to Langkawi Island could have by flight from Thursday onwards do not need permission letter from police. According to a Twitter update by Health Minister Kairi Jamaluddin, only those heading to the island via land transportation from other states are required to do so. He clarified that for the Langkawi Pilot Tourism Programme Travel Bubble, a letter from the police was needed for the purpose of interstate travel and going through roadblocks if they are travelling by land. On 9 September, the government made an announcement allowing domestic visitors from all over the country to visit Langkawi, except those residing in areas placed under Enhanced Movement Control Order EMCO. The island resort was chosen as the first destination of the Tourism Bubble Programme Pilot Project for individuals who have completed two doses of COVID-19 vaccination. This was because it was considered relatively easy to monitor the COVID-19 situation and avoid infections due to its strategic location. Also, Panko Island is expected to reopen to tourists who are fully vaccinated from the 1st of November. Para Housing Local Government and Tourism Committee Chairperson Dato Noli Ashilin Mohamed Radzi, however, said the decision to reopen the island is subject to the approval of the National Security Council. After all information, requirements and standard operating procedures, SOP, have been tabled by the Tourism, Arts and Culture Ministry. She said, based on the latest information received, only 87 individuals of the 8,026 residents, including tour operators, have not been vaccinated due to health problems or are undergoing quarantine as they have been in close contact or were infected with COVID-19. Untuk kami, kami sasarkan untuk kami selesaikan masalah-masalah uh, vaksinasi untuk pemain industri. Uh, kita harap kita boleh memula full eh, uh, on 1st November. Itu sasaran kami di tingkat kerajaan negeri. Lah. She said this to reporters after handing over aid from the Para Malay Chamber of Commerce to the Village Security and Development Committee, Batu Gaja Zone, at Masjid Kampung Batu Lapan today. To achieve herd immunity at Panko Island, at least 8,026 people of the island's total population of 11,500 must be fully vaccinated. In July, Tourism, Arts and Culture Minister Dato Sri Nancy Shukri said Phase 2 of Motec's COVID-19 free destination programme would be extended to popular island resorts such as Rodang Island, Perhentian Island, Tioman Island and Panko Island. to come communications and multimedia ministry to be the voice of the government stay with us welcome back an advance deposit of up to 25 percent has been granted by the communications and multimedia ministry to creative art production companies under the ministry which is about to begin filming its minister tansri anwar musa said the upfront payment could help production companies that have created content with television networks to meet their operating costs and complete their creative work delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Tujuannya ialah supaya mereka boleh melakukan jump start uh, kerana mungkin mereka terhimpit dengan pelbagai masalah kewangan sepanjang pandemik. Jadi kemudahan ini diharapkan untuk mereka tidak perlu risau tentang modal permulaan ataupun working capital permulaan kerana kementerian telah sudah bersetuju untuk memberikan pendahuluan sehingga 25% daripada nilai projek yang telah diluluskan. He was speaking to reporters after presenting food aid to the needy and frontliners of Rumah Prihatin in the nation's capital today. He had received reports that there were industry players, including street musicians, who had to sell their musical instruments to cover their living expenses during the COVID-19 pandemic. The initiative is expected to benefit more than 8,000 creative art production companies and enthusiasts. 
On another note, Tanjri Anwar Musa today gave the assurance that the Communications and Multimedia Ministry, KKMM, will be the voice of the government and the one that understands the pulse of the people. For that purpose, Tanjri Anwar said he would transform KKMM into a ministry that not only disseminates accurate and reliable information, but also responsive and proactive to the needs of the people. He said with all the information and multimedia channels available today, no one will be left behind and forgotten. He added KKMM will not only be the voice of the government, but feel the pulse of every citizen in line with the concept of the Malaysian family, which will connect Putrajaya to the people in every corner of the country, even in the most remote villages. In a release statement today, Tan Sri Anwar also aims for KKMM to be a proactive ministry and ensure that every citizen, no matter where they are, has quality access and connectivity. He said since taking the oath of office on 30th of August, he had taken the approach of familiarizing the role of each department and agency under the ministry in line with his objective to elevate KKMM to a new and dynamic platform. The anti-sexual harassment bill is being drafted collectively through a special project team and is expected to be tabled in Parliament this year. The special team comprises representatives from the related ministries and agencies, non-governmental organizations as well as academicians experienced and knowledgeable in the matter. According to Women, Family and Community Development, KPWKM Minister Datu Sri Rina Mohammad Harun, sexual harassment cases are being dealt with through various other acts and regulations, as the bill was still at the review stage. As such, KPWKM urges victims to continue to come forward to make an immediate report because the existing acts and regulations are being enforced to protect their interests and safety. She also said the ministry, through the Women's Development Department, JPW, had been redoubling efforts to raise awareness through advocacy programs. This is to prevent sexual harassment from happening further, either in physical, verbal, visual or other forms. As of July 2021, 65 awareness and advocacy programs related to sexual harassment, which were conducted and attended by 10,952 participants nationwide. The Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency, MMEA, has detained two tankers for anchoring illegally in waters of East Johor. Johor MMEA Director First Admiral Nurul Hizam Zakara said both ships, one registered in Liberia and the other in Vietnam, were found anchored about 15 nautical miles, 27.7 kilometers, northeast of Tanjung Penawa. He added that the first ship was detained on Thursday, the 9th of September, and was crewed by 22 men from the Philippines at age between 24 and 50. In a release statement today, First Admiral Nurul Hizam said the second ship was located nearby and was detained yesterday. It was crewed by 27 men from Vietnam, aged between 20 and 47. All crew members from both ships were traveling with valid documents. Both ships' captains, meanwhile, also said they were unaware that they were anchoring in Malaysian waters. The act is an offence under Section 491B, Subsection 1, Subsection L of the Merchant Shipping Ordinance 1952. The offence is punishable with a fine of not more than 100,000 ringgit or imprisonment of not more than two years or both upon conviction. But first, Youth and Sports Minister Dr. Sri Ahmad Faisal Azumu is confident that the National Women Football Squad is able to show high fighting spirit in the 2022 AFC Women's Asian Cup qualifying rounds in Palestine this month. He said his confidence was based on the intense preparation the squad had gone through after being confined at Wisma FAM in Kalana Jaya before seeing action playing in the qualifiers on 19 September. Berlandaskan daripada permahatian saya terhadap semangat mereka, saya yakin kita boleh bagi persembahan yang baik dan itulah yang saya telah sebutkan kepada mereka untuk menunjukkan semangat kesukanan yang baik, bermain bersungguh-sungguh dan cuba harumkan nama negara. 
The minister also noted that the national women's squad are sure to give their best as ambassadors to Palestine, where the people there have been impressed with Malaysia from the relationship that has been established over the years. The national team is scheduled to play against Thailand and Palestine in Group H at the Faisal Al Husseini International Stadium on the 19th and 22nd September, respectively. That concludes this evening's news at 10. Our top story is schools except for Phase 1 states to reopen on 3rd October. Join us again for updates at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. Till then, I'm Brendan LePaul. Stay tuned to Southern Berita RTM. Have a pleasant evening. Take care.